Hey everyone, this is S. M. Pratt, and today we're going to talk about alternative investments or alternative assets. This is a very common theme today for good reason, because it's an emerging investment vehicle, it's an emerging pattern, and I think the easiest way to define the term alternative asset is to perhaps talk about what doesn't qualify, which would be a stock, a bond, a certificate, basically anything in that classical investing realm isn't an alternative asset. Now, what is an alternative asset is a bit more difficult to define because there's a wide array. I think something like real estate straddles the fence. Of course, collectibles, Pokemon cards, magic cards, sports cards, numismatics, artwork, even crypto, digital currencies, shoes, basically anything that has tradable value is an alternative asset, in my opinion. In fact, I think that's the easiest way to describe an asset versus a deficit. I think a lot of people struggle with this concept, myself included. I remember when I bought my first car... I bought it at a certain price, it started to depreciate in value, but it still had value, which is why the term depreciating asset <laughs> exists. And I think that is what Pokemon cards and collectibles are at the end of the day. Some of them might increase in value, some might stay the same, some might decrease, but as long as there's tradable value, that is an asset. Whether you bought the card at $10,000 because you thought there'd only be five of them and then it quickly went to $3,000, now it's at $2,000, that still qualifies as an asset because there's tradable value. Now what isn't an asset, or what is perhaps a deficit, is going to be something like Mountain Dew, Doritos, Cheetos, basically anything that's in your fedora when you tip it, that's going to not be an asset. When you go out to the club and you get bottle service and it turns into $0 immediately, that's not an asset because there's no tradable value anymore. So even something like Red's Pikachu, which is the exact opposite of the Pikachu Illustrator, still has tradable value. So that's why it qualifies. And that more specifically is an alternative asset because it doesn't fit that bill of a stock bond or something that's registered and traded. These are all unregistered assets and I think they provide a unique complexion, a unique opportunity for where we are right now. In fact, I think alternative assets are not only here to stay, I think they've already stood the test of time. I think the market is so much more robust. It's much more global. It's much more expansive. I don't think that's going to change in any way. It's much more connected today than ever. I can get on my phone and talk to anybody instantaneously around the world. That is the new standard. So with that said, people are trading things that they didn't trade before. If we go back to 1960, the 1952 top set, they couldn't sell for one penny. They couldn't sell a pack or 10 cards for one penny, the lowest possible amount of money. They could not sell that pack for. And the Mickey Mantle rookie from that pack today, we won't even go PSA 9. In Pokemon, people scoff at PSA 9 and PSA 8. PSA 8 example of that Mickey Mantle rookie today that they couldn't sell for one penny back then, half a million dollars. PSA 9, 2.8 million. Thanks for coming. Alternative assets in a nutshell. Something that has rarity, historical significance, popularity, demand. One more time again, rarity. That is an alternative asset. That scarcity element. There's something fundamental about that that humans desire. It's just inherent to humans. We like that chase. We like collecting those things. There's a nice reward, in my opinion, of course, because I've been doing it forever, of just that chase. There's a reward to it. It's a nice competitive element. It's the myth of Sisyphus. If we want to get really philosophical. Pushing that boulder up comes down. Pushing that boulder up comes down. This is life at large. It's everything you do. When you hit the gym... When you go skate, play hockey, soccer, whatever your sport is, if you're studying, you're getting a degree, you're working a job, it's all that same, that myth of Sisyphus profit, uh, process, that's what you're doing in collectibles. And that's how markets are created. That's essentially what happened. You know, going back to the example of Mickey Mantle, in the 60s, that market didn't exist. And then it slowly started to create over time through organic interest, which naturally segues us to the next thing I want to talk about. Alternative investments require a ton of knowledge. A ton of knowledge. You cannot navigate the waters of alternative investments without knowledge. In fact, all markets are not based on numbers. They're based on knowledge. Even if you read the revenue, gross profit, beta of a stock, ultimately those numbers are knowledge. It's all knowledge-based. It's life in general again, especially with alternative assets. And this is why I always tell people, Organic interest is the root of everything. It's the root of everything. It's the root of creation. It's why these markets exist is because they're created from organic interest. If you have organic interest, you're naturally going to be engaged, which inherently you start acquiring knowledge from that natural engagement, which lowers your risk. It increases your potential, whether you're here to just buy the cards for emotion, 
you want to do it for a living or there's a mixture of those two at the end of the day that organic interest is going to provide the necessary variables to increase your probability of success now underline the word probability because there are no guarantees in life i don't care what you're doing who you are how smart you are how beautiful you are it doesn't matter there's some element of risk in everything alternative assets in my opinion have a very high risk high reward potential that's what you're looking at when you contrast that again with what we talked about in the beginning with stocks and bonds those are very conservative, which is why they yield a much lower return because anybody can do them. They're very replicable. They're very accessible. It's why they are the main artery of investing and the backbone of portfolios because it's easier to put money into something that's been proven that more people are in and that market has been created much longer. There's more inertia. It's long-term based and it's always going to be there. However, I think alternative assets, again, provide something unique. They have a different complexion. They provide a new opportunity, but it is high risk, high reward, without a doubt. No question. More specifically, what is an alternative asset in Pokemon? What is an alternative asset in collectibles? While I think most cards are tradable, most cards won't increase in value. A lot of people forget the Beanie Babies of Pokemon energy cards, the common and uncommon cards, while a lot of them have beautiful artwork, they probably won't increase in monetary value. That is majority of every single collectible. Not every collectible is a 52 tops mantle. Not every collectible is Alpha, Beta, Four Horsemen. Not every collectible is first edition base set or Watsy at large or Japanese promos, pick your poison. Majority of them won't increase in value. And that's why, again, you need knowledge to navigate these waters. Now, a lot of people probably think, okay, well, I know what I'll do. Big brain over here. I'll just buy Charizard. Charizard is the best investment, which is a great example. Again, we can really do some mental gymnastics with just Charizard as a focus. Because Charizard, I do think, is a solid alternative investment. Yes, I said that. Yes, you heard that right. Charizard, I do think, is a solid alternative investment. In general, yes. I think it falls on the side of generally being a better option than most. But keep in mind, Charizard isn't the most valuable card. The most valuable cards in Pokemon don't have Charizard on them. Even things like Trophy Kangaskhan are like, that's adorable. This is why you need knowledge again. You're always going to hit that crossroads of a choice. There's so many choices when you're trying to get into alternative investing, when you're trying to understand collectibles or things that don't fit the predetermined identity these new emerging markets are uncharted territory so the only way to navigate them is to be engaged because a lot of this stuff is new a lot of this stuff is still in the creation process I think a great example can i lean back here successfully sign cards right now great example of an emerging market within pokemon this wasn't a thing a couple years ago yes they existed yes some weirdo like me collected them and just held them for ages because no one cared about them Today, it's a very thriving new market. It's a great example of how markets are created and how they emerge and how they move up, down, and establish themselves. Here it is, organic interest. You have a market of trading that sustains it, that keeps it here. This is it right here in a nutshell. For all the Pokemon collectors, there's your example of an alternative asset in real time. For most people who've been here since the Pokemon Go bubble, even that now is older than the market for signed cards. So... There's an example of something that I think really highlights how the market is today, what it looks like. Things move so quickly, you know, talking about classical investing, you have that nanosecond trading now that just completely shape-shifted day trading at large. The world we're in is so connected, it's so global, it's so expansive, that is not going to change. Even in a recession, paint me the most cynical picture. Paint me the most cynical picture of a dive bomb 2008 scenario. The reality is I'll still be able to get on my phone and connect with the world in real time. I'll still be able to get on Discord and see those beautiful memes in real time. That's not going to change. Alternative assets are here to stay. As cringy as they are sometimes, they do have relevancy. They are relevant. And I think a nice way to close is that something like Pokemon, in my opinion, I think is primed for alternative asset trading because when you look at sports cards it's very optimized if you look at what pwcc is doing they're trying to create basically an ebb and flow a cycle of liquidity trying to increase liquidity for collectibles and in that they're trying to compare and contrast to the s p 500 because they have growth over you know 20 years 25 years that they can show 
and calculate and quantify. Where I think the thing Pokemon has is it's new, it's emerging, but it has more rarity to it. You know, when you look at the Mantle Rookies, when you look at Lotuses, when you look at the top of every hobby, Pokemon cards are much rarer. You know, even Host Wagner, Pokemon cards are, their Pokemon cards are much rarer, if not the same rarity as that. So, therefore, I think that's the big potential with something like Pokemon is that when there is more understanding, when the market naturally grows with time, that will be the thing that I think is Pokemon saving grace, is that combination of immense popularity, history. We grew up with this. It's our experience as 90s kids. That rarity element is paramount. And also things like Pikachu's not going to have a steroid problem. Charizard doesn't need to do steroids. He can breathe fire. I mean, you're not going to have Blastoise funding some type of opioid crisis. That's just not going to happen. That's not going to be a thing. So you have, again, an item that I think is tailor-made to be an alternative asset. It already is, whether you like it or not. That is already what it is, inherently. And again, it's here to stay. Because I think it, ultimately people enjoy this. I enjoy this more than stocks. While I have a boring old 401k that I never look at, this is much more engaging to me. Even if I don't always hit it out of the park, there still is an engagement and enjoyment that exists that's unique again. It's a unique complexion. So that's my take on alternative assets, alternative investing. I think it's here to stay. I think it provides something unique, but don't forget, don't get it twisted. High risk, high reward. You can't escape that. If you want no risk, you want to sit back, get your throw blanket, feel the microfibers on your chest, classical investing's for you. Wait 30 years, be a hard worker, create passive income. There you go, follow that model. But again, nanosecond trading, things move so much more quickly today. I think while that classical investing will always have a root in society, everything has changed. Uh, and this is why alternative investments are here to stay, again, in my opinion. So there you go, guys. I know this one was heavily more on the finance side, but I think a lot of people like to you know, hear that incorporated. Let me know what you think. You know the deal. Let me know how you feel. Until next time.